Economists noted that the state of the labor market is similar to that which existed before the COVID-19 outbreak with low unemployment and plenty of work prospects. However, employee confidence has declined. Economists noted that financial strain brought on by rising interest rates and inflation is partially to blame for this. What's happening in the US job market? Labor analysts claim that the job market is still robust despite a slowdown from pandemic-era highs, but employees don't appear to agree. According to Glassdoor data, employee confidence dropped last month to its lowest point since 2016. A year ago, 54% of employees said that they had a favorable six-month view for their employers. This percentage has dropped to about 46%. In the meantime, the ZipRecruiter Job Seeker Confidence Index dropped to its lowest level since early 2022 in the second quarter, losing 6 points. Economists speculated that the contrast between robust labor market and declining sentiment is probably caused by workers' financial strain and the fact that the previous baseline was an extremely competitive job market in 2021 and 2022. As per Julia Pollack, chief economist at ZipRecruiter, workers still have more leverage and more job security than before the pandemic. I believe job seekers feel worse off when they compare this environment to 2021 and 2022, she continued. Finding a job is becoming more difficult and job seekers are searching while facing more financial hardship. For instance, in an effort to slow the economy and control rapidly growing consumer prices, the Federal Reserve raised borrowing costs in response to inflation. As a result, interest rates for consumers have increased, including those for credit cards and mortgages. The savings rate has sharply decreased. This month, student loan installments started up again. Economists stated that a number of indicators such as job vacancies, resignations, layoffs and the unemployment rate point to a robust labor market. It is softer but steady, according to Glassdoor's head economist Daniel Zhao. When you consider all of these indicators together, they suggest that the labor market is in a reasonably stable state rather than one that is necessarily expanding rapidly. In general, Pollock stated that the signs are comparable to or perhaps greater than those from the period before the epidemic when unemployment was low, more people were entering the workforce and racial and gender employment disparities were closing. She remarked, that's a very good thing. As a measure of employees' willingness or ability to quit a job, the August quit rate was 2.3% according to a study released by the U.S. Department of Labor. This figure is consistent with February 2020. It was down from a 3% peak in April 2022 when a record number of workers were resigning in what became known as the Great Resignation, but it remained unchanged from July. Similarly, the hiring rate was about the same as it was in February 2020, albeit a little lower. According to Labor Department data, job postings, a measure of companies' desire for labor, are 37% higher and layoffs are still 15% lower than before the COVID-19 outbreak. In actuality, the Labor Department announced that there were 9.6 million job opportunities in August, a considerable increase of 690,000. Economists have grounds to believe that the growth is unusual nevertheless. First of all, there are often large ups and downs in the data series from month to month. The overall pattern is evident. According to economists, the number of job postings, resignations and hirings has decreased from its peak during the epidemic. Zhao stated, I believe a lot of people are comparing the job market today to a year or two ago when things were hot. But naturally, the economies of 2021 and 2022 also had issues. Among the issues, because of decreased purchasing power, inflation has reached its highest point since 1981, undermining the large raises that employees had been receiving. Some industries, including technology, overhired, which forced major tech companies to fire tens of thousands of workers. According to Zhao, an overheated labor market is unsustainable since it increases wages and job turnover, since it increases wages and job turnover to the point that inflation is fueled. The degree to which this might have happened during the most recent inflationary period is unknown. The current labor market is in a better place despite the fact that it's more difficult for many workers to find employment or receive a raise, Zhao stated. Economists noted that it's obviously uncertain if and to what degree the job market would continue to cool. 
Zhao listed further economic challenges like rising oil prices, ongoing auto worker strikes, and the possibility of a government shutdown in November in addition to increasing interest rates. What are the reasons behind labor shortage in the USA? Number 1 is retirement at an early age and an aging population. The pandemic forced over 3 million adults into early retirement as of October 2021. All things considered, the percentage of persons 55 and older who have retired and are no longer employed increased from 48.1% in Q3 2019 to 50.3% .3 in Q3 2021. Furthermore, the proportion of elderly in the U.S. population is rising significantly and this trend is probably here to stay. This change is partially caused by younger generations having fewer children than earlier generations did, which leads to an aging and dwindling population. Number 2 is the United States' net international migration is at its lowest point in decades. According to data from the U.S. Census Bureau, the number of people living in the country increased by 247,000 between 2020 and 2021. However, net foreign migration to the country didn't contribute to this growth. The effect of immigration on U.S. population growth decreased by 76% from the peak of the previous decade when immigration contributed to a 1,049,000 rise in our population between 2015 and 2016. Number 3 is inability to get childcare. Lack of access to high-quality, reasonably priced daycare was a problem even before the pandemic. According to research from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, the states questioned in Alaska, Arkansas, Arizona, Missouri, and Texas missed an estimated $2.7 billion in economic growth every year as a result of childcare system flaws. According to a report by the Education Trust and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, the pandemic produced a vicious cycle for the childcare sector whereby people required dependable daycare in order to return to work, but providers are also faced with significant obstacles. Numerous daycare centers were forced to cease or reduce operations because of the pandemic. From February to April 2020, the sector lost 370,600 jobs, 95% of which were occupied by women. Sadly, the rebound hasn't happened quickly. As of September 2021, employment in the childcare sector was 10% lower pre-pandemic levels. Furthermore, women are joining the labor force at the lowest rate since they began doing so in appreciable quantities in the 1970s. 3.5 million mothers quit their jobs in the spring of 2020, bringing the percentage of working mothers in the labor force down from roughly 70% to 55%. Women's labor force participation hasn't yet fully recovered to its pre-pandemic rate or to when it was at an all-time high of 60.2% in early 2001, despite the fact that more women are employed now than in February 2020. According to 27% of unemployed workers surveyed by the chamber after they lost their jobs due to the epidemic, returning to the workforce has become difficult or impossible since they have to take care of their children or other family members at home. Number 4 is New Business Launches Some workers choose to launch their own firms in the spirit of entrepreneurship, choosing to quit their jobs or remain unemployed. Over 5 million new enterprises were launched in 2023 alone and 5.5 million are expected to launch in 2024. Employees of all ages, but essentially younger ones, have also embraced internet commerce as a new source of revenue in significant quantities. 2 million people earned 6 figures or more on social media in 2020. The digital age has caused a cultural shift that's permeating the labor force that's permeating the labor market and creating new obstacles for employers to overcome in order to attract talent. Number 5 is a rise in savings. Increased unemployment benefits, stimulus checks, and the inability to spend money due to the COVID-19 pandemic all helped Americans accumulate $4 trillion in savings since the beginning of 2020. Specifically, 68% of claimants earned more on unemployment than they did while working due to the few hundred extra dollars per week from increased benefits, which terminated in September 2021. According to the Chamber poll, 23% of women gave as the reason for not re-entering the labor that they have family members who make enough money for them to work full-time. 
people's financial stability was strengthened by increased income and savings, which allowed them to keep out of the workplace. But as savings accounts are being depleted by increasing inflation, many are being forced to re-enter the workforce. What do you think about the collapse of the US labor market? Do you think that the struggling US economy is the primary reason for the labor shortage? Do share your valuable thoughts on this in the comments down below. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Goodbye for now and see you later.